right now, most of you are currently sitting on your brains. Now, you're probably pretty confused about that statement, and rightfully so, but perhaps this will clarify. Smartphones are a marvelous invention. They allow us to hold the entire internet in the palms of our hands. But at the same time, they also allow us to essentially stop thinking. Have an event you need to remember? Oh, I'll just set three different reminders on my Google Calendar. Need to calculate that 20% tip for the meal you just ate? Hmm, I'll use my built-in calculator feature. Trying to avoid the awkwardness of human interaction while standing around waiting for somebody? Hmm, maybe Pinterest has something new and interesting. All of these things are very helpful tools when used properly. As an engineering student, there's nothing more frustrating to me than witnessing society chronically misuse the devices that people like me have labored to create. And we're all guilty of it at some point. I'm just as much of a contributor towards the problem as anyone, but I am slowly relearning how to put my brain back up here. Every day, our electronic devices are getting smarter, faster, and vastly more human. And in an ironic contrast, it almost seems as if we are rapidly devolving. Relationships are now dependent on technology, from asking for a first date through Tinder to that dreaded breakup text. Thanks to the countless games and entertainment outlets available to us, true boredom is nearly a thing of the past, and that's dangerous, because boredom spawns creativity and innovation. Our dependence on technology is eventually going to cause us to stagnate as a society and a species. Um, instead of growing alongside our machines, we are becoming them. So what can we do to fix this? We need to bridge that gap between them and us. Now, it seems like a lofty task to build that bridge at first. I mean, we all know that there's a multitude of differences between humans and machines. But at the same time, the, the key to the solving this problem is a very human concept, respect. Growing up, your family most likely taught you about respect. They taught you what it meant, how it's applied in everyday interactions, and why it is important. It is a fundamental building block to our social order. And though respect is a rather abstract concept in and of itself, it's also something that we place great value on. We purposely shape our behaviors in order to earn it, almost as if it were a physical commodity, such as food or money. So why is it then that something so basic, something so important to us as a species, is so quickly forgotten when it comes to our technology? Now, I realize how strange this is going to sound, but what we really need to start doing is we need to start treating our technology as if it were our best friend. We need to start humanizing our outlook on our gadgets and thinking of them as if they were sentient beings. Now, what could this possibly have to do with respect? Well, take a moment to think about that. You might ask your best friend for a favor or two, sure, but you certainly wouldn't expect to rely on him or her for everything. And even the greatest of friends need time apart on occasion. It's necessary for maintaining a healthy mindset and relationship. And I would certainly hope that you don't repeatedly drop your friends on hard tile floors or stuff them in your back pocket, but then again, that's none of my business. <laughs> and if you were to start respecting your smartphone the way you would your best friend, how differently do you think you'd start using it? It seems counterintuitive to consider an inanimate object the way you would another person. But one day in the not-so-distant future, that object just might be your best friend. Our mobile devices already contain basic artificial intelligence personalities. And every time you interact with Siri or Cortana, you're talking to an object. And there is nothing wrong with that. Intelligent machines are on the way, folks. Pretty soon, your car will be driving itself, your phone will be a constant companion, and you will have various mechanical assistants aiding your every task throughout the day you will have more free time than you could ever imagine. This is the sort of future that the creators of these gadgets had intended for. Machines would lift the simpler burdens from our shoulders to enable us to better use our time and potential. It's how you use that time that matters the most. Right now, our lack of respect for technology is leading us down a slippery slope of dependence. Because it is so easily accessible to us, we are turning to it to perform even the most basic of tasks. And I recently conducted an anonymous survey amongst my peers about their phone usage habits. And out of 75 responses, 65% indicated that they use their phone to perform basic tasks at least part of the time. And additionally, 
47% of the survey's responders also said that they used their phone to increase productivity less than 10% of the time. That is a lot of wasted free time. This may seem harmless now, but what is it doing to our future? If we allow ourselves to become habitually lazy, all of that newfound free time will be wasted. Instead of doing, it, doing things like researching a cure for cancer, it would instead be wasted in the burrows of social entertainment. Instead of growing alongside our machines, we would become them, unable to think outside of that which sits directly in front of us. And this is not good because we need to learn how to adapt on our own. And we need to maintain our, our ability to problem solve by ourselves. And I find that a lot of times our reliance on technology stems from inherent insecurities in our own abilities. For example, I frequently find myself using a calculator to double check even very simple addition. And that's because I have doubts about my math skills. And I know I'm not alone in this insecurity either. And an important part of learning to respect yourself is to not allow insecurity to drive you towards taking the easy route. And an important part of this is the fact that no matter how sophisticated our technology gets, the one thing will always remain true, and that is that the technology was made by a human mind. You are capable of doing nearly everything your technology can. You may not currently possess the knowledge or practical skills to perform a certain task, but the potential is always there. Realistically speaking, you wouldn't set a calculus problem in front of a five-year-old and expect him or her to give you an answer in under a minute. You probably wouldn't expect an answer at all. Why? Because you realize that that child has no means of knowing how to solve that problem, but probably could one day after spending a certain amount of time spent learning how to. And likewise, we are all children. There are a lot of things we deem ourselves fundamentally incapable of doing, when really, all we need is knowledge and practice. And we need to start respecting ourselves by casting aside those unreal expectations. And the only reason why your machine can do these amazing things straight out of the box is because it was given the sum of our knowledge straight from birth. It already knows what took us thousands of years to develop and learn for ourselves. And this direct transfer of knowledge essentially eliminates the process of evolution. Instead of learning by trial and error as we do, our machines simply know only within certain parameters what to do. And this limits its adaptability. And adaptability is a very important key in true intelligence. For example, one thing that really surprised me over the last semester break was when I noticed that my smartphone started giving me automatic updates about how long my commute to work would be that day. Now, this doesn't sound too impressive in the, at the first, but what really surprised me about it was the fact that I never told it that I worked there. I never told it that I worked anywhere. And yet this little sheet of plastic and wires was smart enough to see a pattern in my traveling habits and to make an educated guess about the importance of that location to me. That is incredible. And this is just the first step in machine intelligence. Along with adaptability comes personality, the traits which enable a an individual to be perceived socially. Right now, the closest equivalent we have to a personality that we can give our machines is pre-programmed responses when given certain input conditions. And no matter how many times you try to annoy an AI with a single repeated command over and over and over again, it will always respond in the same manner. It will never change. Now, if you were to do that same thing to another person, you could expect anything from a witty comeback to a punch in the face. <laughs> and this lack of adaptability makes it easy for us to disregard the AI as an intelligent agent because we know that it will not reprimand us for disrespectful behavior. And this creates this kind of barrier between us and it that we really need to break down. So imagine if Siri suddenly became sassy. <laughs> what if after your 10th time of prompting her to find you funny cat pictures, 
She blatantly refused the request and comment, commented pointedly about your odd obsession with the feline species. Now, you might begin treating your device with a bit more caution, perhaps altogether avoiding triggers which may cause a negative response. Or perhaps you'd keep engaging in these behaviors anyway, just for your personal entertainment. But either way, the efficiency of your device is directly related to your level of respect for it. And perhaps the system of consequence is a necessary evil in teaching us how to respect our technology. And those of us who are going to be tomorrow's engineers and computer scientists can certainly strive to make phones sassier, if that's what it will teach, teach us this lesson. But I know that we can build this bridge without it. So how can we start respecting technology? Well, there are three ways. First of all, put it down. Give yourself a break. Give it a break. I mean, it loves you, but it doesn't want to see you all the time. And I'm not saying you have to completely relinquish your privileges that your technology gives you. Just make sure you're not spending all of your free time behind a screen. Second, stop using it to be lazy. If you, know, if you are asking a question that you know another person would judge you harshly for asking, you probably shouldn't be using it. You know the answer. Don't doubt yourself. You got this. And finally, be mindful of how you physically treat it. Not only will this save you heartbreak and money as you crack fewer phone screens, but it will also make you more aware of how you respect and treat your device physically. Building a bridge is a multi-step process. First, you must begin with devising where it is you wish to go. And then you must figure out how it is that you are going to construct this bridge. Then comes the setting of the foundation. Without a sturdy base, the whole thing will crumble down under pressure. Then, once that is built, you may begin to embellish and add your own flair. And then you may cross. And a whole new world awaits you on the other side. And much like building a bridge, our societal journey with technology must also follow these steps. Where we wish to go, that refers to our desire to form a symbiotic bond with the technology of tomorrow to regard them equally as friends and coworkers or allies. And as for how we're going to build it, the key we now know is respect. And as for the foundation, that refers to our security in ourselves. Before we can welcome this strange new partnership into our lives, we must be entirely certain in what it means to be human. And we cannot allow ourselves to feel obsolete nor should we ever try to suppress our inherently emotional and sometimes irrational aspect. And as for when we cross over, well, that's when we get to start progressing forward. And our technology is waiting for us, folks. It's over there on the other side of the bridge. And once we cross over, we can truly walk hand in hand with the machines of tomorrow into a brighter future. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.